My name's Aaron Lodge, most people know me as Bodge, and I'm here with the public eye. Hello. Kavan, who's the bass player. Kaven. 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 There's a bit of debate, isn't there? No. Yeah. Are your names, Not even uh, sure. Yeah, I get called on names on this song. Kaven. 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 Yeah. So remember that one. We've got the drummer Zach here. Yeah. Joey on lead vocals yeah. and guitar. And then we've got Jonah. Who's a West Ham fan. Who's a big old West Ham fan. Lions! <laughs> oh, he's, he's that big a West Ham fan that I'm not going to know it. <laughs> you are not going to the game and you're going to miss it because you're going to be playing the venue. I know, but I was there for Leon and Seville. So you're missing it tonight because yeah. you're going to be playing the venue. Mm. So you're going to be playing alongside a band called Shadows of the Silhouette. Everything's going away so slow. The restrictions of the road only make me want to go We're playing on the undercard to you. Yeah, yeah. You lads are in the middle. Yeah. yeah. And then the headline acts to overpass, which uh, they're starting to make a bit of noise for they themselves, are. aren't they? How are we feeling about it, though, boys? What's oh, I can't wait. I'm yeah. loving it. Yeah. I, I, I can't I'm believe. buzzing. I'm. I can't you know what I mean? It's like it's so does to play the biggest venue in your town, especially when we've been like what only been together for like what, six, seven months. Yeah. Well, well, around so. that. Yeah. It's just a constant buzz. And you played all all of your originals as well. Yeah, mm, yeah. yeah, full original set. Yeah, how are you feeling about that? Seven songs. Right. Confident. So we enough. wrote them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we wrote them. Only you can fuck them up. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 who knows if you fucked them up? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Half yeah. them aren't released. We could have released a song. We could literally yeah. play it on bollocks for half an yeah. hour. Yeah. Play it in reverse. Freestyle it, mate. We're actually playing a tune that we wrote on Tuesday, so that's going to be a little experiment for everything. Yeah, yeah. And you wrote it. I'm guessing this is your rehearsal space. So yeah, you wrote it in here. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. In front of Mar Baker. Mar Baker. Oh, absolutely. We've got a story about Mar Baker. But, uh, I think we should let Kevin take oh, yeah. it. Go go on. You little, little, little is known from us three. He's like, he's like the White Horse historian. Me. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got any like, glasses to put on. Like, a <laughs> I wish we'd actually bought something. <laughs> yeah, Mar so Baker. Mar Baker cup. Mar Baker. What about her? Yeah, so she used to be the landlady. Um, and then she passed away and apparently she haunts the pub and we tell all the female bar staff that when they go down to the cellar to get the shit out of okay. them. <laughs> um, <laughs> But there's, no. there's been some sightings of her as well, hasn't there? Like, there's been some weird stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah, bro. Right. When we've been playing, I remember singing once and I heard some female voice in the background. I was thinking, looking over there, like, this ain't fucking yeah, right. right. And Jonah yeah. tried leaving. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it's probably not far off. Yeah. I, get, I get inspired, it's my inspiration. What, what, what about this building then? Because I've got Oh, it's a protected that. building, isn't it? Yeah. This one. So it can't yeah. be knocked down. It's 100 years, years old. Yeah. 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 Very old. And so we're not allowed to do anything with it. No, they can, like, renovate it and stuff. Like that, How does that feel like that. for you, lads? Then you know, for this being so so much of a part of Derby's history, to be able to kind of make your first steps into the music industry from your hometown, going that expanding outwards, to be able to have a space like this, how important is it? Well, do you know? Do you know what it is? It's like it's like a landmark. Like yeah. people will go, it's a protected building in Derby, yeah, and it easy. wasn't being used for anything before we came in, and we came in, and started to practice it. Yeah. You know, we have a song named after it, written about it. We in the art building, we're playing up to it. Not released yet. It will be a uh, Next month. Month. Yeah, yeah. It's just about sitting in here and drinking lime and sodas and that. <laughs> yeah. That's and then write songs on the If you like didn't it. know, the public eye is still under 18, so this is this. <laughs> all of the rest of that stuff is to come. But yeah, for but the time being, it has to be <laughs> lime and sodas. Lime and sodas. Spoons, like. Yeah, yeah, well, this, is, this, <laughs> is this is it. Going back to how you were formed in its first instance. So, Joey, I, I, I've known you for about a year and a half, and yeah. that was when you were working as a solo artist. And, and just tell us about how you lads came to be rehearsing in this space because like you say it's been seven months yeah, so um, the story of public Carby. basically in, in the beginning there was nothing now but like you know, so <laughs> it started, <laughs> off, <laughs> it started yeah. off so i used to play um, fifa with jonah because then um, he used to play you know like pro clubs and that yeah. they all jump on the same squad and you're all just one yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah it's fucking yeah. loads of arguments going on, even more than what happened to the band it was like yeah. fucking, it was like more of a commitment than the band. <laughs> 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 we're on it from about two till ten every night so like, we, 
we have to get to watch the West Ham game on the telly as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> Joan used yeah. to play for my mid Sunday league team, and we needed like a centre mid in pro clubs because we wanted a full team to play against our rival pro clubs. And this is sad. They were scraping the barrel at this point with me. So, so are you are you the centre centre mid that they came looking for? I am. You, 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 I'm <laughs> So it's the Declan Rice, <laughs> yeah. of the guy yeah. at pro clubs. So Dylan was like, Jonah, come home and jump on pro clubs with us. And he, he was the only one who said, yeah, really, in, in the chat. So he came on and I spoke to him for a while. He couldn't even play guitar. But we're like, he, we, we're like, we listen to the same music sort of thing. He was, like, he was like, if I get a guitar, can we start a band? I was like, yeah, and that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It did. So was Jonah the first? The first, the first piece, yeah. yeah. Is it, mate, it's, it's like fucking Nick Fury, isn't it? I felt yeah. like they were having a different people. Yeah. Then, um, I was in a previous band, yeah, wasn't so I? Zach used to be in a different band, and um, I'd seen him play, so it was like talking for ages. I was like, well, when your band fails, come fucking join mine, essentially, and then he yeah. quit and joined mine. <laughs> yeah, just and left straight away. Kevin, um, <laughs> I've been mates with this guy called Archie and Ball on the same day, and everything. Same old school, next same to Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm also friends. Same friends. Same friends. Fist bumped on the way out. It was the same one. Fist bumped to each other. No, no, no. Oh, oh, I, thought it was a, I thought it was like as like a double deck. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there's a rumour that they got switched at birth. <laughs> that yeah, the Dave is, is isn't actually is Joey's dad. <laughs> this is it. But he was mates with the cavern and um, he said, I've got a um, this guy plays bass and if you ever need a band, they'll come do it. So I dropped Cavern a message and I saw his Instagram was like CB21. So I was like, oh, I was like, please, 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 so you had yeah. your third single come out on April the 23rd, yeah. St. Yeah. Yeah. Day. Adelaide. Mm. Adelaide. It's about like, um, you see a lot of like friends and I'm, I'm sure like loads of people who relate go through like really fucking toxic relationships yeah. where you've got your missus like telling like, oh you can't, you can't go here, you can't do that or something like that and then they get yeah. out of them. So how, how do you find yourself writing a lot of the music when you're bringing out these singles because Twister, Out of Line and Adelaide, although they follow certain themes of, of relationships, they're all quite varied in the, in the way you actually put them down on, on paper and perform them, you know yeah. what I mean? So, where, where do you find yourself getting a lot of your inspiration from? Early 2000s, noughties, rock. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Strokes, yeah. Arctic Monkeys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Arctic Monkeys definitely. Well, you talk about the post -punk, post -punk. People well, say some of the stuff sounds like Arctic yeah, Monkeys, yeah. Yeah. doesn't it? We had a gig in um, Sheffield a couple of nights ago. Yeah. Where was that? Uh, West, West Street Live. Live. Banging. Yeah, and a couple of people said that we even sounded a little bit like Catfish in a Bottle. Never heard so that one. I've never heard that. No, I suppose Adelaide, when you look at like Catfish's first or second album, yeah, yeah. and there's certain tunes that do bring it, strip it back a little bit, there is a certain of that in Adelaide, I think. That yeah. There's like a certain vulnerability that comes with that kind of tune. And mm, yeah. Twister's like quite high energy and out of line. I'll be honest with you, out of line reminds me ever so slightly. And this isn't a disrespect to like 505 and yeah, then yeah. yeah. How it's did it feel that is, that is one of the inspiration songs we took. Yeah. We had Do Me a Favour, but which is on the same album that yeah. 505. It's our favourite worst nightmare, which is a massive it's 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 Favourite Worst Nightmare, um, Is This It by The Strokes and Room on Fire by The Strokes, which are massive. Yeah. And yeah. then uh, Where well, People Say I Am, That's What I'm Not. And then uh, we add, and it's a really cool punk song. Uh, Babylon's, Babylon's Burning. Babylon's Burning by the Ruts, is it? Jim. And essentially, when we were writing out of line, it was going to sound, before we had lyrics or anything, it, we had that bass line and then completely different guitar on top of it. It was going to be this really heavy, fucking punky song. Yeah. And then we were like, no, this sounds shit. And then on yeah. accident, I was like, why don't you try this? And we played this like minor chord. I think and it was like, punk's harder like, to get right than people think, because yeah. oh, people think it's just smashing There's method, method, method yeah. Yeah. There is, there is method yeah. to it. There's a, the, the new one that we've recently just wrote, that's quite fast and sort of punky, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, that's great. It's got it's got our own sound to it. It's that We've also almost got, haunting sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've also got another one called Dangerous Game, which probably isn't going to come it's out. It's not going to see the light of day for a bit. We don't think it's because, very punky. Yeah. Yeah. And again, getting that right, like you said. We don't really know what to do with it because you know what? Personally, I like it, but it doesn't sound like a public card tune. Yeah. It's nothing like any of our other stuff. Yeah. Where's the the end goal? How far do you see yourselves going? As, as a four piece. We want to get a Glastonbury main stage. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Coachella main stage. Why not? Love it. 
obviously we've got one. Why not? Well. Yeah, we've yeah, got yeah. why not as well. Yeah, so you're going to be playing that BBC end, introducing stuff. End of July, start of August. How are you feeling about that? That's must be absolutely Well, we're, we're in there with one of the best <laughs> why not lineups yeah, in, the, in, 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 in the last few years. I agree. Apart from the one with um, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> 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 Snoop Dogg. Honestly. You've got Seraphonics, you've yeah. got Manic Street Preachers, which if you don't know, get to know because yeah. they're fucking yeah. immense. Um, so blossoms, it were yeah. great. Yeah. Fucking uh, well, it's the like vaccines, it were great. Uh, it was, Coops. You go down um, the line, you get bunch Coops, of like yeah, on Thursday, and you go, and you just keep going further down. You've got them. We are scientists, who yeah. are around the same time. Right. Well, Amazons, yeah. Amazons. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, every, you know stage, every stage, every stage, every stage. Just, yeah. Yeah. Beans yeah. on toast. Oh, oh yeah. beans yeah. on toast. Look at this. And even on the introducing <laughs> stage, you know, you've got ourselves, and then you've got the likes of Shadows in the Silhouette who yeah. are there tonight. Kukumaras, you've got Kukumaras who are immense. You mentioned Chase, yeah. 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 We're gonna go uh, see Kukumaras. Yeah, we're well, the rescue rooms. Get on it. Yeah, rescue rooms. But um. And the Chase who are, who are doing loads of stuff with this feeling at the moment and the Skinner Brothers and they're going on tour and they're getting huge now. And, you know, there's loads of other bands that are on that side. It must be inspiring for yourselves Mella, to, yeah. to know you're on the same lineup as them. Yeah, that would be just, even if you just, as long as you're on the lineup, it doesn't matter, does no, it? No, it doesn't. Can, the only way is up from that kind of point, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, best of luck to you, lads. Thank you. Thank you. When I did my Blue Canoe business cards, I got them from a leading business card provider. I'm not going to mention any names, Mr. Print. And, uh, they sent Thank out the wrong business, business cards, cards by the way, Mr. Print. Yeah, there are other <laughs> business cards available. One side of them was supposed to have the Blue Canoe symbol on it, and um, they turned up without it. So what I have decided to do is make little quiz cards out of them. And now I'm just going to shuffle this deck, lads, and you're going to pick one out, and then you're just going to put it out to the boys. Right, Cameron, you can start. Take one. Ooh, yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah. How many cards do you want? Um, you have thirty pounds to spend on a takeaway. Hungover, where do you go? Oh, Indian, man. Indian, Pashwari naan, chicken jal frazi, <laughs> uh, uh, fried rice. Um, Oh, what, what's my starter? Uh, I'll have a tandoori kebab mix. It's fucking immense. It's been us, this question. It's fucking yeah. immense. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's been hoping to Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's one. Where is it? Where is it? And then if I've got anything left over, I'll go to Tesco and grab a packet, a packet of hot dogs. A packet of hot dogs. Yeah. He's got some in his pocket now. Oh, no, they're all gone. They're oh, all they're all gone. gone. I'm getting right, that going. Oh, yeah, go on, choose then. a card. We'll go with this one. Right. Best gig you've ever been to. Uh, well, that's shit, because I've only been to one gig. <laughs> it's got to be the best one you've ever been to. What gig is it? Does that I, went, oh. I, went, I went to Liam Gallagher. I went to see Liam Gallagher. Oh, and that's that's not a bad start. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, I know. Is it, does it count festivals? Or yeah, just gigs? Just, yeah, just the best performance you've seen from a band. Right. No, the best yeah. atmosphere I've ever been in was the streets. No. Yeah. Oh. When I went to watch them at Tramlines, and they were absolutely immense. I tell you what's happened this time! The best musically performance I've ever seen was Night Cafe when I went to watch yeah, Rock City. Really and yeah. they were musically immense. <laughs> Thank you for all the mullets that crushed me in the mosh pit. Yeah, I'll tell you what, there was this one mosh pit right at the end, and the whole place fell over. We were all on our backs, yeah. and I genuinely thought I was going to break my leg because it, somebody was going. It's to really scary it. because you can't move. Yeah. See, I've been in mosh pits where I thought something might end up happening, and there is that like ten seconds worth of time where like. <laughs> I was about to go south. That was yeah, like, yeah. it's like divine intervention just exactly, suddenly picks yeah. you up from the floor, doesn't it? Weirdest fun moment to date. Um, so I, I've had a few. Um, I, was in, I was in Seymour. I, well, I say fun, I'll just say weird fucking experiences with yeah, people. Yeah. Um, I, was in, I was in Seymour's um, great place. There was this woman, and um, she was like fucking, to, I don't know, she came in somehow. Apparently she'd been banned because like, she'd been in every other week, like glassing people and like mental stuff. And um, yeah, she just got like sumo wrestled by like the bands and it was mad. I was just playing like what that yeah. in front of you. Yeah, I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> just sort of like to speak in between. That's what happens when you're out of line, though, isn't it? And then, oh, we were yeah, playing, yeah. Joey. We were 
playing here, and uh, we were playing here, weren't we? And, and some guy came up and grabbed and your bollocks. Your bollocks. <laughs> and it, it wasn't like it wasn't like just a quick grab. Like I, I couldn't escape, so he just had <laughs> my bollocks. And I was trying to move back. Vinnie Jones, Gascoigne. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just had him. Well, I remember I was playing in uh, Nottingham once, and uh, well, yeah, it's what what to expect. But um, there's this woman. And uh, she, after I played, she was like, oh, she was going to my dad, she was like, oh, your son's great, can I kiss him? And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, no, no, I'm gonna kiss him. And so she grabbed my face, she just had this curry in it, so, and stung. And she started lipsing me. Smell James and James. Oh, it's <laughs> your <laughs> No, 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 can you tell? If it was a warmer, then, warmer, then, warmer, 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 then you're right to be disgusted. That's brilliant. Tuna, come on, pick a card. Come right? on then. Thoughts on Marseille? <laughs> right, oh, you know what? You know what? Oh, fellow Derby yeah. bands, fellow Derby yeah. bands. I don't want you to stand by. I say forget it out. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll be open about it. It's a shame that we've had this stigma around us and they've had it it's about them. just because we're the same age. You know, yeah. that we're the same age and it's a rival band. And, you know, there have been stuff said, but we're not going to go into that. Yeah, it's, it's it's, uh, with a band, it's it's solely on music. Yeah, yeah. And what they've put out recently, we Got think, is very, is very good yeah. music. And, uh, you, you know, that Forget It All was done really well, and kudos to them. And that state of mind that they had put out last year, I've always been a fan of. And you've got to have respect for the stuff they've made. You can't, th you can't be biased in any way at all. You know, this question doesn't ask to compare, but I think it's quite hard to compare us. Yeah, we make, you know, we, we all play guitars, it's a four piece band and shit like that. But our music's, but our music's completely, completely different. different. Yeah. You know, apart from Twister, which for us is a bit of a weird one to the catalogue, because what yeah. we've written since it's and what's out like now it. is nothing like it, yeah. but it's there. And that is the only song you can really compare yeah. us to Marseille. But yep. you know, fair play too. Best, to best, best, best of luck to them. Best of luck to them, and hopefully, it's, they think the same of us. But if they don't, they don't. Who cares, really? Yeah, it's really easy on blockers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 we would be yeah. nice if we can view you on Instagram, yeah. lads. Or yeah, they don't, they don't know about the if, deck. If you're of watching this, hi, Will. If you're watching this, <laughs> yeah, they don't know about the Deck of Rice fan account. <laughs> 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 so I'm there, never searching it. I've changed the name. I've changed the name. CB22. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, lads, I, I think I think that deserves a round of applause for how well you've just handled that with class in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, hopefully it's the same because you know it's completely different music, yeah. man. There's no beef though, you know. What I mean? No, there, there isn't now, and you know we'll let them let them get on with it. And there's there's, there's enough space. Us. In Derby for two good bands, isn't it? Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. you know what? There's enough space in Derby I'll for every what. good band that comes through. And Music will never be as good as it was in like the 1970s or the 80s if it isn't as shared as it was. Because you got to think, you've got to have all them good bands coming out. If your music scene, it's your be local scene. city, isn't united, then and I tell we're you, all just gonna fuck in. You're gonna push each I other. I tell you out. what, you bring each other there's up, a you know fucking I mean? immense scene in Derby now. You've got the likes of Slends, who you know very personally yeah, yeah, and yeah. went to my school. He is immense. The hate that I get from man, they don't know that it boosts my ego, and you know that I'm gonna roll soon, tryna fly high like my name was Eagle. That idiacs who goes to my school as well. Who... I'm a DE boy, got rep my city. Whoosh. I got love for my Goldie Cody, me and bro like flipping Zach and Cody. If it's on top, so flip your homie. The amount of talent that is coming out oh, it's, it's, it's immense. And even if you go, you know, because you can count these middle, because with how the BBC view it, and that's pretty much the biggest way that you can try and get yourself out there, probably apart from TikTok now. It goes TikTok and then the BBC. Yeah. So if you class, let's say Leicester, Lincolnshire, Nottingham and Derby, yeah. the amount of shit that you've had come out in the last 20 years, you know, you've had Kasabian from Leicester, the Struts from Derby, Easy Life from Leicester, um, you've had from Nottingham, you had Kukumara's come through, we were yeah. gonna go massive. Even people like your Brucey's in your window. Oh, and yeah. Oh, yeah, I love a bit of Brucey. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, every, it's everything in all types of genres, and you know, for, it, anything can be said about anyone. But at the end of the day, we're all here to make music. Cover, mm. go on, pick another one. We're not going to keep you all day with questions, but there are 12, so it's three each. Thoughts on Piers Morgan's new TV show? Poor. What do you think of Piers Morgan? Uh, it's, a, it's a weird one because, like, I'd like sure there's probably been moments in his career <coughs> where, like, he's done things that have got, they've been good and he's brought up good things, but as a whole, he just like he, he don't let people fucking speak. No. That's the that's the problem. You know you're you're the interviewer in it, but it's like you know when you get a referee who thinks they've got the start, they, they think they're as big as the footballer in it. It's that sort of thing. It's like, but sit back for a minute, mate. I'll like, tell you what. When he did his life stories, and he had John Lydon from the Sex Pistols on Johnny Rotten, 
he asked him about Jimmy Savile because there's this famous interview with John Lydon that was never aired on the BBC. So you know what's amazing now is how strong people are to come out about yeah. these types of things. social oh. media. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I do find it as a, a band that relies so heavily on social media to get more stuff out compared to say a band in the 1980s that, that just it was word of mouth and yeah. Yeah. You know, it's got its own pros and cons hasn't it for, mm. for yeah. people like yourselves. I mean we're like quite like, like old fashioned in the way that we still do get a lot of it out through word of mouth. Yeah. But, like, I mean it's still definitely nice to have a nice like digital copy of everything. Yeah. Because it's huge now. Everywhere. It's nice it's for everyone to just see what you're getting on like what you're doing isn't it? Like, yeah. yeah. For and everyone it's huge else. Now. You know back in the 80s and 90s it was a word of mouth was all done through like, A&R scouts. Yeah. No, no, no one's an A&R scout nowadays, yeah. and and if you are, you my job's been dissolved, haven't it? Yes, yeah. and if and it's if you whitelist, and you can, it's something called the whitelist or something, where you yeah. can literally just look who's doing like the maddest and like stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so that's what we're talking about. And if and if you are an A&R scout, you're definitely not going to shitty bars and pubs now. So everything's done through online, and you said. You, I remember you saying to me that someone said to you, it's, it's all about having a good social media. Your music and if, can be shit as long as your social media looks nice and tidy and well, mainly number one market. You are going to go a couple of yeah. at that mm. release. And then um, they said, they said, you know, if your social media is good, and that's great. If you can, if you can make music on the side, it's the moment. I mean, it's, it's not the way it should be, but you've also got to like. You've got to work around that and take it to your advantage. That if like, because obviously everything should be about the music. And music mm -hmm. really. But if you're making good music, then you. Can I think that's what you boys definitely pride yeah. yourselves on, though. Is is making decent music. You're not just trying to go on the coattails of social media and all of that kind no, of stuff. Definitely. Mm -hmm. You can tell through your music that you, you really give a shit about it. Yeah, just want, yeah, just want guitar yeah. music to be at the forefront, even if it's not us. Just for yeah. guitar music. To Do be you think the trend is, is going a bit full circle? Massively. It's, yeah. yes. It is a full circle yeah. thing every twenty odd years. So you get the main spark and then the studios come in and fucking ruin it, but then it, it, it comes again. And but it, are you, you looking to be that spark? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 well, do you know what? We've come to the we've come to the forefront in this city at the right time. And if you can get a city behind you, look at what the Art of Monkey did for Sheffield. Yeah. And you know Was it cool to play in a city like Sheffield knowing that? Oh, of course it was. Yeah, it was. Especially, especially in a venue like West Street Live. Mate, I tell you what, it was a really venue, good venue. Yeah. That bloke at the takeaway was well sound down the road. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but I tell you what, it was a terrible business, man. He didn't, he didn't, he, he didn't even know that I paid. He didn't even know that yeah. I paid. I could have walked away, Scott. I could have walked away with a kebab and mid chips and not paid. Yeah. You know what? You'd have had 30 quid left over. <laughs> the Indian, yeah. <laughs> So there's like a lunch deal or something. Yeah. Um, Jonah managed to negotiate getting the lunch deal. <laughs> and then he didn't even bother after asking lunch, me to lunch hours. <laughs> It was about seven o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and the lunch finished at four. That's brilliant. <laughs> kebab was banging though. Yeah. Kebab yeah. was. See, this it is was the tactical really, really masterclass. Nice this is it. Where, where was it in Sheffield? Uh, it was Aslan's. Aslan's. Aslan's, Aslan's, the place. Aslan's yeah. kebabs Aslan's on Aslan's West Street. It was on West Street. Right, what the fuck is that? Oh, it's not what it is, it's actually one. Snug, Snug, Mario Boy, Wayne Rooney. Who's that? Oh, Ben, you Charlie Slaw. You've given the worst person to I'll read it out. Oh, no, no, no. You can put it across to everybody that's here. So, Snug, Mario Boy, you've got Wayne Rooney, Pete Doherty, and Charlie Slaw. Well, I'll marry Wayne Rooney because he's the only one I know, and I know he's rich, so. <laughs> right, who's going to clarify? Charlie Slough. Charlie Slough. Charlie Slough's the Radio 1 presenter. He's got the, oh. the, yeah, he goes far in the booth. I'll oh, give him oh, a big kiss. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah. Ch Ch Charlie Slough, he can, he can have. No, no, I'll tell you what, Wayne Rooney, he can have the kiss because, you know, he's a bit beautiful man who would have that sound. Pete Doherty, I'll marry him, but as the day, he, I can appreciate it. Who's that? Who's that? I don't, that? Like, who's that? I don't, I don't want the taste of, like, the fucking. Who's that? Liberty. Liberty. Oh, Liberty. And then, yeah, Charlie Slough, I don't know. Well, no, right, I thought of it. You just, what? you just snug them all, you. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Do anything for a takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd avoid Charlie because I don't seem to cross him past very much, you know, it's a different style of music. Put so. the car fire in the boot. Yeah, next year. Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, Charlie, I'm sorry, but I'm avoiding you. Um, Do you know what? If I kissed Pete Doherty or snubbed him, I don't think it would be a. Oh, I'm into you. I think it would just be we're both pissed, and he's probably <laughs> took something and he's <laughs> fucked. And I'd marry Wayne Rooney for the same reason as Zach. He's got shit to money. <laughs> yeah, bro. He can buy your takeaway. He did that, that mad bar so. as well. 
It was uh, Pete Doherty was doing an acoustic gig on his own, just acoustic guitar, so you're thinking, oh, it's going to be quite a laid back thing. Yeah. And he did it at the venue in Derby, and it was the same week, it was on the Wednesday before I went to Tramlines for the weekend. Yeah. And for an acoustic gig, you played all the Libertines hits, and I'm a, I'm a huge fan of the Libertines myself. For an acoustic gig, and people yeah. were mushing, yeah. like the whole place was bouncing. I was, it was nuts. He's played there a couple of times now. I'm not sure if I was at the same gig, but I went to see him at the venue as well. Yeah. Which is obviously where you lads are playing. When was it? When did, when did you go see him? Yeah, I feel like it was in an October. No, it was around uh, Valentine's Day, so it was in a February. Oh, no. Yeah. But he played with the Puta Madres, which is yes, a band. yeah, and yeah. he's and he's fantastic, mate. Absolutely, for he's a, a place like to him anyway, who's mm. from London, who's been mm. around the world, for him to control a crowd and put 110 percent yeah. in in a place like Dark. And do you know what? Credit to him, man. Do you know what? Credit to him because it was one of his first gigs back um, on his own after he'd just come out of rehab in France. Or I don't. It might not have been rehab, but he was just coming out of oh. a bit of a self you know, seclusion in France. And he'd lost loads of weight and he looked great and he sounded great, his voice sounded great. Before Pete was playing uh, the venue, he was in the Blessington garage. Yeah. And you know, apparently it was packed, no one went up to him. They all knew it was him, but no one went up to him just to leave him to his own business, yeah. do you know what I, I mean? That's and that's how good it yeah. is. He's fucking, from a musical standpoint, he's just fucking amazing as well. Mm. Like if you look at his lyrics, He's not just a songwriter, he's a poet, he's a poet massively. He's a poet. And he, that's what I, mean. I guess he sort of loves people that do that. And to like sit and look at the way he does it, it's sometimes nice to have these like poetic elements in your songwriting. Because he's fucking, especially through his voice, you know what I mean? It's, it's great. It's not just all playing instruments and making it sound right, it's lyrically trying yeah. to yeah, yeah. tell stories. And then having the whole yeah. image behind you. Because let's be honest, the Libertines yeah. were probably worse than Oasis for causing shit. And you know, Oasis is the one that everyone turns around and goes, you know, they yeah. were the worst. Throwing the bad boys of, the bad boys of music. Yeah. But the Libertines, you know, you hear stories of um, uh, Pete not turning up for shows and then breaking into Carl's flat, going to prison and shit like that. And you hear Carl Barat turning around to Pete and calling him God knows what, and then banging his head off a, uh, a sink and having to have loads of stitches in his face. Yeah. And they're both just fucking nuts. <laughs> and the drummer is a fucking machine, yeah. Gary Powell. This has been the public eye. What a pleasure. And Thank you for having us. Thank you all. Yeah.